Hey guys, Ash here and today I've been lucky enough to go to the launch of the Yotes Phone 2 here in London's East End. Today, the Russian company Yota Devices are launching their second generation Yota Phone, aptly named Yota Phone 2. This is a very unusual device and not what we see at all in the current slew of mobile devices we see coming out today. Not much has been known about this phone, we haven't seen it in public much either, but there was a nice buzz around tonight's event. It looked good, it was busy, but chilled out at the same time. We had a press conference, we saw celebrities, and of course we saw the dual-sided phone itself, the Yota Phone 2. It comes with a 5-inch 1080p AMOLED display which is powered by a Snapdragon 800 processor. I know what you're thinking, but with the brief amount of time I got to play with the device, it handled itself fine. As do most devices nowadays. The original Yota Phone debuted this time last year with a lonely Snapdragon 400. So if anything, this is a step up. We have the headphone jack up top, the volume rocker on the side, which also doubles as the SIM card slot. Underneath, we have the standby button and flanking it is nothing. Finally, we're left with the micro USB connection point at the bottom. Further to the spec sheet, we have two gigs of RAM, an eight megapixel rear camera and a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera. This is all run from a 2,500 milliamp battery. This should provide a solid base for the most unique feature of this device and that is the rear e-ink display. The back of the phone is covered with a 4.7 e-ink always on display. It has a 960 by 540 resolution with 16 levels of grayscale. It's a capacitive display and is covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 3. This proves a logical choice given that the back of the phone will be the side that comes into contact with surfaces the most. I managed to get some time with Sharif, the VP of product strategy. He took me through his personal Yota Phone 2, which exhibited a small gray border as it was a prototype. We explored some of the main features of the device. I also managed to ask him some questions regarding the hardware, software, and design choices. So let's take a look. So um, what you're seeing here are my, um, uh, well, we call them Yota panels. They're very similar to Android home screens in that, in that you can pin favorite contacts, favorite apps, widgets that you, that you use a lot. Um, and I've got my counter down here with missed calls, texts, emails. Um, and these panels are cool because they're, they're optimized for Android. But we also can run apps that were not optimized for our um, uh, display. So how do, you, how do you do that? How did you achieve that? So we do this um, using a, a mode called Yota, Yota Mirror. So if I tap Amazon Kindle right now, which is a shortcut on my, on my uh, Yota panel, we are now running the traditional, the regular Kindle app, but we're running it on the EPD. So uh, let's uh, load up a, a book. So technically, was it, how did you get it to work? Did you have to change the, the way that Well, there's, there's, I mean, there's quite a lot that goes into it, right? If you, what we're doing is, I mean, in the simplest uh, way, what we're doing is just sending the book from here to the back, but there's a little bit more going on, okay. which is that, for example, we sort of intercept it, and we do a few things to filter and improve sharpness and contrast. And also we um, uh, play with the sampling rate so that page turn animations won't interfere with your reading experience. Okay. So, so we sort of get in there and make Yotamira work, especially for reading, because people around the world have their favorite apps. Now those apps will work on our EPD. To read on this side, you're looking at about five days of battery life versus about 10 to 15 hours reading on the AMOLED. So with the original Yota phone, I remember you could still use the back display even when the battery was dead. Is yeah. that still present on this? We, we, we call this feature Yota Snap, right? So let's say that you have some, uh, your phone is dying or you're about to land in a, in a foreign country and someone sends you a cab company detail or a map, okay. um, anything like that. You can quickly grab that image. Um, let's say this was something really important. Send it to the back and it, it'll be there, stored. Now, let's say I had this map, this, let's say this was the most recent Yota snap I've taken, okay. which is simply a screenshot sent to the back and held. If my phone was to die now, right. this map would be held. So even if I'm, I'm walking down, this has zero power, this map will still be there. Same with a QR code, for How example. Would it be there for? Because the e-ink the e here is using no energy when static, okay. it will just stay there. We call it a kind of life after death. So what are some of the other features? Uh, I, I saw that there was RSS feeds and you can interact with the back panel as well. There's a whole bunch of customization that you can do. If I turn around and I load our um, uh, app called Yota Hub, you can see that the panels that I've showed you, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, these are covers, but these are the panels that I've been showing you. Everything is changeable, you know. Um, I can mess with what 
the, which, uh, with the apps I have pinned, but I can also just completely change a, a widget and choose some other widget to put there. So, you know, over time you get your favorite sort of layout, and I have my news reading sort of app here. I have an agenda app, uh, agenda panel, with my with my sort of day ahead and the uh, the weather for the day right, okay. and so on. And all of this you can completely change. You had a quick glimpse there of the other side of the phone, which is Yota Cover. Once you understand Yota Mirror, Yota Panels, and Yota Cover, you kind of get the how to use this phone. And Yota Cover is simply think of it as a lock screen, stroke okay. screensaver. Um, that you can feed from your Facebook album or from Instagram, and you know when you're, let's say you do have your agenda uh, for the day up on the, on this, and you get on the tube and you don't want people to see what you're doing next. Yeah. One tap brings down your Yota cover. Ah, That's nice. my mate Marcus there, I, you know, uh, my dad, and yeah, whatever's on your Facebook album, your Instagram album that you set there, that will come on and sort of auto carousel. Can you choose which pictures or which albums? Yeah. Yeah, so you can choose from local storage or you can choose a Facebook album, specific images which you can recrop, resize, or whole albums. And if I had a pin set up right now, when I when I want to lift this cover, um, that's when it will uh, ask me for my uh, my pin. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned it was quite customizable. Is, is there an SDK going to be available for developers? Yeah. It's actually really easy. If you already have an Android app, it's really easy to use our SDK to, for example, create a widget to go alongside your app and to make your app run natively on the EPD with better contrast, better sharpness, and just a smarter use of the EPD. Okay. Twitter have done that. So with the Twitter app that is um, you know, made with the benefit of our SDK, uh, let's see here, I've got Twitter running just here. This is a native app, so it offers you the best possible experience. So Twitter see the benefits okay, yeah, of, of running natively, and we hope that many, and it meant well, many others have. Um, Texter is a reading app, Mantano is another reading app. We hope that many um, app developers will use the SDK to quickly adapt their apps for the EPD. So on that, does it, do the apps, do they dynamically update in the background, or do you have to? They unlock? dynamically update, they're live. So um, just to give an example, if, um, uh, uh, well, let's say a, a new calendar appointment was to come in. Okay. I would just have my phone um, sort of uh, uh, sitting on the uh, on the desk, and uh, let's skip that. If um, someone was to, well, let's say a new tweet comes in, it will just be there, so I don't have to pick up my phone, navigate, or whatever. It will just be there while I'm working on my PC. Usually, I just have this next to me. Question: I noticed that the camera on the new phone is actually probably technically less capable or compared to the first. Was that intentional or? And what's cool is that you can actually now mirror the camera. So you've got a two megapixel front facing camera, but an eight megapixel on the back. But if you mirror the, um, the camera, you're now getting selfies through the, so there's you. You're now getting eight megapixel selfies through the back there, which is, so, you know, compared to a two megapixel selfie, they might get from a regular. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And of course, then you can use those as covers. Absolutely. Bring them down. And there you are. So I can resize that, get that all ready from my, uh, to be my cover, there you go, and it will download. My first impressions of the device are pretty good. It's not bleeding edge in terms of components, but this is a new device which offers a genuine difference with the design that Yota have created. It was a good night, there was a lot of commotion and quite a lot of other media outlets perusing and exploring the device. I believe the phone will be good for the market. We need more devices which offer something different, but not just for the sake of it, but for genuine reasons. Yota showed a range of features tonight and my favorite is something simple, but highly customizable. The ability to put what Whatever image you want, even something you've taken just one second before on the rear panel and have it stay there indefinitely is genuinely interesting. That added to the e-reader, RSS feeds and slowly but surely more supporting apps, this could be quite a unique phone. I don't believe anyone will make use of the ability to type on the back of the phone when they have the front available, perhaps if you're really trying to prolong the battery life. but. I'm also interested in also finding out the longevity of this device from a design perspective. The e-ink display on the rear will most definitely be subjected to quite a lot of contact from various surfaces and how this will affect the display is yet to be seen, not to mention how it will fare against potential drops. During the conference, it was said that the phone will be available for £555 or €699. Euros. It is now on sale in 20 countries in Europe, the CIS and the Middle East. In 2015, they will slowly be launching in other markets such as Asia before expanding to the USA, Canada and Latin America. Guys, this was a quick look at the launch event of the Yota Phone 2 and some very brief first impressions. Take it easy and stay tuned to Android Authority for more videos about this device and many, many more where we are your source for all things Android.